Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Homes. Today we're looking at the three ways to mask in Blender. That's the three ways to mask in Blender. There's more than three ways, right? but these are the three main ways for motion design and motion graphic artists and aspiring motion graphic artists. Right. So the, this series of three ways to do is really about motion design and motion graphics in particular. So masking has been a real pain point for me in Blender um, for the eight years, eight to nine years, almost a decade now that I've been using Blender. It's been difficult to progress the motion graphics skill in Blender because of the quote unquote lack of masking tools. Um, Non-destructive particularly where you can use several on the screen, non-compositor type of masking tools, because that's important. And it's an essential part of motion graphics in general. So this series is to show you three ways that you can do it. I'm happy to say here in 2024, Happy New Year to you, that the masking situation in Blender is better. And I'm also sad to say that some of these tools that I'm going to list here have been in Blender from the very beginning, even eight years ago, but they're incredibly obscure and not extremely telegraphed and you wouldn't know that they do what they do unless someone tells you that they can actually do it. And that's what this series is for. So, three ways. We're gonna be looking at the Boolean masking, we're gonna be looking at the texture masking, and we're gonna be looking at the grease pencil masking. There is enough three ways to mask in Blender. Let's go. Okay, so we're getting into the free mask now. The first mask is the Boolean mask. Now I have a project in front of me that I've not released, but I think this is an excellent project to take a look at masks uh, because I use them quite extensively here. And this is um, some text here that spells out education. All right, simple. And we use the Boolean mask in this text here. So if we take a look at this section here with the box, and we take a look at the text as it's moving, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and the book lands on it. All of that is being masked off. We can see that the D, the F, and the C only appear within the context of this box. And this mask is the Boolean mask, and the mask object is this box. So we're going to select the H, which is the object being masked, because that's the object that we add the Boolean modifier to. And we can see, if we go to our right hand box here, we can see that we have the Boolean modifier indeed. It is um, found in your modifiers tab here, that's this wrench. And we have some options here that we can utilize as well. Now the thing about the Boolean modifier is that there's nothing on it that says mask. <laughs> it's um, obscure to say the least. Working from the top down, we have the name of the Boolean modifier. We have the option to enable it in edit mode and enable it in the real time display of the viewport and to enable it in render. Good. And you have the option to apply and duplicate here. You don't really want to be applying the Boolean modifier when we're using it for motion graphic needs. It's better we leave it as is. Um, that's where the masking utility comes from. Then we have a section here that we have that says intersect union and difference where union is the or where intersect rather let's start at that is what we have here that's what we have selected in blue and that's basically wherever the mask intersects the masked object that object that is masked is visible so right now we see that the alphabet here that we have here is visible within the constraints of the intersecting mask if you select difference, everything outside of the mask is visible, right? So we can see here, everything outside of this box is visible except for what's within the box, right? These are the two options that you would use really for um, masking needs. You wouldn't be using union, which essentially just has um, the combined vertices of everything and the box. So. This isn't so useful for masking purposes, but the difference and the intersect is where you would re where the masking really shines, right? So those are the next things. Next, you have the operand type. We can either pick object or collection. And all this means is that whatever we're using to mask, we're just specifying what type it is. 
So if it's an object, we put object. If it's a collection, we put collection. And then we go underneath and select what object and what collection is doing that masking. Advise, strongly advise that you're using the fast solver because this does a better job in general um, for motion. Right, when you're looking for um, objects and cutting out objects with the boolean modifier, the exact does really well. Right, so there's nothing on this that says mask, but it does a fantastic job doing masks right here, as we can see. Um, excellent modifier, excellent tool for masking. It also doesn't affect objects in front of it or behind it. You can see the book goes over the um, eye right here and it's not affected by the boolean whatsoever. And um, as such, it's non-destructive in that sense. And you can have several of them. The boolean modifier only works on meshes though right so you need vertex data and typically the more complex the vertex data is the longer it takes your computer to calculate it and the more chance there's going to be errors so you want to make sure that the vertex data that you're using um, is as simple and as um, non-intrusive uh, versus not close to each other as possible right? this helps the solver a lot and that's what i recommend so that's the boolean modifier Okay, next we're going to be looking at the Grease Pencil Mask. Now, this is a, the newest of the three and came out with Grease Pencil. And this mask is also incredibly powerful. It only works with Grease Pencil objects. That's something to keep in mind. But it's a mask that can literally just mask out anything that you have in your Grease Pencil. So an example of the mask being used here is the U. If you take a look at this U right here, we can see that a wave has been applied to an object and the wave is being masked out by um, this U here outline. So if we take a look at the grease pencil here, as a grease pencil object here, we can see something called U mask. And that is the mask itself. If we increase the opacity, we can see what this mask looks like. It's just a purple U. We have to reduce the opacity in order to use the mask. And we've applied all of these waves um, to use the U mask right here. Good. So that's wave one, wave two, wave three is affected by this U mask. And that gives us this nice effect of liquid actually filling up the U right here. All right. And the mask holds intact. You can add several of these masks. It's not particularly intensive on your computer. However, when dealing with these masks, I tip I can get um, artifacts at times. I've, I imagine when the grease pencil team rewrites the code, uh, rewrites the the code for grease pencil, which is what they're currently on, um, then some of these errors and artifacts will disappear. Um, I find that I, sometimes it's not super reliable. You can also see this mask um, used in my logo as well. My logo uses this mask for the last part where you see the paint um, filter through to show the African pattern. Yeah, that is the grease pencil mask and I've used it quite a bit. I've got even tutorials that use this mask quite a bit. The subscribe tutorial uses it and such. So this is a very, very capable mask and I highly recommend it. Again, only for grease pencil objects and you want to make sure that when you're doing it that you um, set your mask object at the bottom here. Make sure you're in your. Let's have this selected again. Sorry. Make sure you set your mask here. You have to enable it here, or you can press the ticky box right here under the object that you wish to mask. And then you put here the masking object itself. And you can decide whether you want the mask inverted, um, similar to what the boom had for difference and inset and um, intersect. You can have it intersect, or you can have it difference. Just the same by clicking this button right here. So yeah, that's the grease pencil mask. Fantastic mask for your motion graphic needs. And last is the image texture mask, which I think is the most powerful mask. And the only one here that's labeled mask is the grease pencil mask. <laughs> but the image texture mask is one of the is the other obscure mask right very powerful but also very obscure right not very telegraphed 
and it's not even called a texture mask here um, I don't think it even has a true name but it's a series of shader nodes that we compose together that allows us to mask things off All right, so what we have here if we look at the scene here is that we have this 4 now as this 4 um, shows itself up in the display uh, we can see that the texture in the 4 if we look closely is moving you see that this is the image mask at play All right, and this is this is why this mask is also why the most powerful because everything that we render in blender will turn into an image or a series of images eventually right not to mention that we can also mask procedural textures this way so we can always export something as an image um as an image a single image or even a series of images and mask this off now mind you this type of technique when masking videos and moving images like um, image sequences it typically takes a lot of processing power I don't know if it's because it blender has to go back and forth in the file system to read the files so this is a this is a note a uh, problem with this type of method but if blender made this such that it was faster to load everything this would pr this would be a, a very very um, useful and impactful mask probably would outplay the rest of the mask easily but it does have that limitation so you can only add a certain amount of them on the page before you get really slow results all right so right here let's take a look at the four if i go over to my shader node uh shading and we take a look at it let's just go ahead and turn this on a bit we can take a look to see how this mask is done now in this instance i'm using window uh, and window is the texture coordinate for the window for the camera window so wherever the camera moves, the texture will also move as well. And what we have here is this pattern that I've imported, which is just a zebra pattern. I've even changed the color slightly of this pattern. If we go ahead and we can just enter in the shader and show you. Right here you can see it's blue and black here. Um, we've even changed the color of the shader a bit so that we have a different color. And what we've, all we can do here now is because we're using the window as the four moves across the window so the texture will move as well right? but we can also move the texture manually so you have the wire moving the texture here and this is also non-destructive meaning it's not going to affect any other object in the scene that goes over it or behind it so if we take a look at all right this section here let's just go ahead and add a mesh just to show you good and let's bring up on the Z GX see right here it's not affected by this by the image mask cool and this in my opinion is the most powerful mask now there are other masks um, that are not worthy of mention you can think about the compositor mask like the crypto mat and the regular um, holdout both of those are very very good masks um, I don't have a tutorial on those two masks because I don't particularly use compositor masks but they're good they're still usable but often enough in a scene you want to be able to render mask real time as you're animating what you're animating and as a motion designer i think that these three masks the boolean the texture and the grease pencil are the best masks for motion graphic design right? i wish i knew this eight eight years ago i wish grease pencil existed eight years ago but even the other two masks would have been absolutely sufficient to progress my motion graphic um, career and my skill in blender if had i known it so i am imparting that knowledge to you cool so if you enjoyed the tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions be sure to ask i'll do my best to answer them as long as they're in my capacity to do so and also if you have any um, accommodations or you have any suggestions or what you think you can do better, you can also leave that here too. Right, happy to get your contribution, happy to hear you speak um, in the sense of your message, and I look forward to replying. So, until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new door. Later.